This time I'm laying laminate in the studio, and while I've done it before, this time I have to retrofit it around architraves and skirting, which involves using a multi-tool and fixing floor trims. Before we get stuck in, why laminate? It's three or four times cheaper than solid or engineered flooring, it's easier to lay, and while the real oak may look superior to begin with, oiled finishes can turn black if water is spilled on them, and if lacquered, it can scuff and scratch. So I'm a fan of laminate, and I'm a particular fan of Wix laminate. This time I opted for the Novelli, which besides the colour has the features I like, including a good thickness of 12mm, it's a wide board, and the four edges are all bevelled, so once laid, you can see each individual plank. For underlay, I chose this XPS variety rather than the wood fibre type I used last time for a couple of reasons. The first is that the size of one pack of the XPS is enough for this room, just about. And two, it has a better TOG rating, which is thermal performance, which will work well with my insulated floor. Of course, if you have underfloor heating, you want the TOG rating to be as low as possible to allow heat up through the underlay. The downside of XPS is that it crushes underfoot, so instead of laying all the underlay first like I did with the fibre, I'll lay one row at a time so I can avoid treading on it. I decided to lay the laminate along the length of the room, and you need to start in the left hand corner with the lower tongues of the board on the right and facing the rest of the room. So I could have either started at the door to the room or the opposite corner. Because my skirting is already in place and laminate needs a 10 millimeter expansion gap, I'm going to be covering that gap with trim, but around the door it would look messy because the trim is straight and the architraves are rounded, so I need the laminate to go under the door architraves. This would be very tricky if it were the last row, so this is why I'm starting here in this corner. I put down a piece of underlay and a board and marked the level I needed to cut the architrave. I then cut through with my multi-tool and chiseled out the rest. I then marked up the board, cut it to shape with the jigsaw and it slid in place. The rest of the first row has to be ripped down along its length at the back to be flush with the first board at the front, and I cut holes for the radiator pipes with a spade bit and jigsaw, which we'll come back to later. If you're cutting a board at the start of the row, you need to flip it over lengthways, add the 10mm packers next to the skirting, mark up where you want the join and cut there. The cut side that can't be connected to the next board is against the skirting and the lower tongue faces the rest of the row, which simply click into place. At the end of the row, you repeat the same steps as for the first board, and here it worked out that I could use the offcut from the start of the row. Now from one row to the next, the joints need to be offset by a minimum of 30 centimeters. And what seems to be done a lot is to line up the joints on every other row, or they get staggered by the same amount on each row. But I think if you can make the pattern on the joints more random, the end product looks a lot better. So rather than using the offcut from the end of a row on the next row, save it for a couple of rows later. That way there's no extra wastage, but the pattern ends up more random. Back to the underlay, as I laid each row, I used aluminium tape on the joins to keep it in position. And when I got to the end, I only had scraps left, so I made a bit of a jigsaw and taped it over, which was fine. No underlay left over to store in my already cluttered garage. The final row of laminate is then ripped down with a jigsaw and clicks into place. Looking good. Now we have a gap around the laminate that we have to hide. If you don't have skirting on yet, then you can use it to hide the gap as I've done before. And I must say it does look a lot better. Earlier in the project, I ummed and erred whether to take the skirting off, but in the end decided to leave it in place, which means I now need to use trims to hide this gap, for which there are two choices. You can either match it to the floor or match it to your skirting, if your skirting's white. If you go for the former, then you really have to buy it in the same place you buy your laminate, so it's an exact match. If you go with white, you can get it from somewhere like Screwfix, where it's a lot cheaper per meter. There are a couple of other advantages to white trim, which we'll discover in a minute. If you're using floor trim in a bathroom or kitchen, then you'll probably want to opt for PVC trim, as the MDF stuff will warp when wet. This stuff is also good for bending around corners, such as bay windows. For this room, I'm going with MDF with the white foil wrap, and I had a rummage through my garage to see what I could attach it with. Mitre Bond, I think, is the best option, but I couldn't find the glue to go with the spray, so as I was impatient to get going, I started with my Brad nailer.
That worked pretty well, but the next day I picked up some Mitre Bond and I saw that there is now a version with an applicator pen rather than a spray, which I think would be good for the floor trim, but it wasn't in stock, so I'm going with the spray. When I got to the door, rather than cutting the trim straight on, I cut another 45 degree mitre and glued a small section to it to round it off nicely. The trim looks really good and the only thing I'm now left with is these nail holes where I use the nail gun, but being white I can just fill the holes and paint over and they're virtually invisible. I then did the same with the corners where there were any small gaps. Okay, finishing touches. Abby and I reattached the radiator and I added plastic sleeves to the pipes. I got some wooden pipe collars and this is how I mark them up to know where to cut them. I then tidied the cut edge with some sandpaper and fit them. And it looked really neat. If you find that the trim and pipe collars don't cover the hole in the laminate, you can re-glue the section that you cut out earlier. Final thing is the door threshold, which should sit directly under the door when it's closed. If you're carrying your laminate through to the next room, it's still recommended to put one in to allow for expansion. I needed to take back the laminate a touch, which I did with the multi-tool again. I'm really loving this tool. Then I could peel back the sticky underside of the threshold and stick it to the floorboard below. Depending on the height of your floor, you can either attach the threshold straight down onto this, or you may need to add in these little brown bits to raise it further, and you have the choice to do so either on the low spots or the higher ones. I used my knee kicker to readjust the carpet as best I could. It doesn't look great, but I'll be replacing it soon enough. With the now higher floor, I trimmed the bottom of the door, gave it a repaint, and job done. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It's a big improvement on the carpet. The next project is some scaffold board shelves. They're really simple to make, but I think they look awesome. So that's next week. See you then.